Welcome to FDA and device approval. I am Gary Freeman, as she mentioned, and I have over 30 years experience in the industry, both for drugs and devices. Um, over this time, I've worked as a monitor, a project manager, and an auditor for device trials in the United States. The concept to master here is what is the purpose of the regulatory authority, the FDA, and what do we need to do to obtain approval for a medical device? So let's get started and we'll look at today's learning objectives to do that. The first one is to talk about the FDA regulations and the practical application of sponsor and investigator obligations that are defined in the Code of Federal Regulations. The Code of Federal Regulations, as you probably know for devices, is Title 21 of the CFR Part 812. That's about the IDE, Investigational Device Exemption. And we're going to talk about the structure, the purpose, and the practical application then of ICH, International Conference on Harmonization, because they highlight in lay terms a lot of what is involved in doing clinical trials and getting approvals in a much better language style than what the Code of Federal Regulations uses. We don't need to be a lawyer to understand the ICH, but we often do need to have some kind of expert uh, advice in terms of where did they get this in the CFR. The CFR is much more generic. We'll also then look to describe the technical standards that are described in ISO, which is an, another international standard organization used for devices internationally. Very consistent with FDA's interpretation of the law as well. And finally, we'll also de define some common terms that we use in device research. When we do this, we're going to describe three decision-making pieces that we have to make in the U.S. for device development. What classification does the device fall under? Is it equivalent to something else? And what kind of risk would be involved in that device? Those are the key parameters that we need to know as for how do we proceed to test this medical device. And then we have two pathways to market. Do we approach the FDA with a PMA, pre-market approval, or a 510K, which is a pre-market notification? We'll just describe the differences in those. We'll navigate the, P the FDA's approval process for both of them. And we'll then describe what an IDE and a PMA are what goes into it, and what is the review at the FDA. So what we're going to start out with then is the oversight purpose. Why do we have an FDA to start with? What, what is it they do? And their main role is to protect the people, the consumers. That would be you and I, as well as the people on the clinical trial. The study itself, yes, they're looking at those subjects, but they're also looking at What's going to happen when this is marketed to the consumer that's actually purchasing the product? So they're looking to protect the right safety and well-being of everybody that's ever going to be exposed to the product. And they need to consider all the aspects of that before they go and allow you to conduct the trial, number one, and before they allow it to be marketed, number two. They're looking to promote the public health by reviewing these clinical trials and act on the marketing. Should they allow it? Should they not? and then ultimately to protect the public health by letting it continue to be marketed. And that would be the recall um, potential that they have if something should come up after the study is marketed. As you probably then know, with your background, the devices are managed by the Center for Devices and Radiological Health, CDRH. That's a different group than the group that, de that uh, works on drugs. Many of the folks that have been in the drug division, which is the Center for Drug Evaluation and Research, we call it CDER, C-D-E-R, many of those folks have, moved, have migrated from the drug division into the device division because the device division is newer and there have been more opportunities for them. When they've done that, they brought with them a lot of the mindset of the drug world. So occasionally, they'll come along with questions in your protocol, something in the IDE that may not make a whole lot of sense to you that have been developing the device all your time. And that's because they're, again, cluttered with some of the minutiae, shall we say, from the drug world, and some of those regulations are a little bit different. So we have to cope with that once in a while and let them know that they're not exactly on target, um, even though they have those positions. So we do have to be watchful of that. They are a different group, um, but they, like I say, many of them came from the larger group, which was the drug 
uh, folks.